Friday. It's finally Friday. Are you as excited as I am about this? I'm pretty excited. Um, I'm also excited because I am going to be showing you how to make a gorgeous floral pie decorative top. With the holidays coming up, it's pie season. And um, last week I posted on Instagram um, my pumpkin pie. And every year I try to up my pie game, especially the decorative tops. And um, I got such great feedback on my pie top and everyone's asking me, how did you do it? Oh my gosh, you're amazing. It's actually not that hard. So um, everyone was asking me, great feedback. I decided, you know what, today's the day I'm gonna show you how to do a decorative floral pie top for your pies. It's really easy. Um, Caveat though, I am gonna be using store-bought crust because just with timing, um, this is a last minute idea, so I just wanted to show you the technique. Um, store-bought pie dough is a little bit drier than my homemade dough, um, so just keep that in mind. Um, I'll show you how to handle store-bought pie dough um, in, in the process, but um, either way, whatever dough you've got, whether it's store-bought, whether you make it from scratch, the technique of creating flowers and leaves and, and an elegant um, floral top is the same. So join me today, get your apron, get your flower, and get your beverage of choice, whether it's coffee or a little bit of wine, and join me today as I show you how to decorate a pie. Okay, the first thing you need is a well-floured surface, and you need a somewhat chilled dough that you're gonna wanna roll out a little bit thinner than a typical pizza crust. If the dough is too thick, it'll puff up a lot and you won't get the kind of um, detail that you want. So I'm going for like an eighth inch thick about. <clears throat> See, it's pretty thin. So let's work first on kind of those larger rosettes, which you're gonna need a sharp knife. And depending on the size of your rosette, so we're gonna do a big one, like kind of a feature on your pie top. So a rosette about yay big is going to be a longer strip of dough. Smaller flowers and smaller rosettes and even buds, which I'll show you, are shorter pieces. So Use your bigger pieces first. And what I like to do is cut a strip. And because this is the longest area diameter of the dough, and then I cut flat on one side, and then I'm going for about an inch in height on my large rosette. I'm gonna cut a strip, but I'm going to cut this strip in a little bit of a wave. Do you see what I'm doing here? This gives the rose more of a petal shape. Like this. Now you start on one end and you roll it somewhat tightly at first. To get the center. And then, as you start working outward, be a little looser. And as you loosen the roll, gather the bottom, kind of pleat it to open up the petals. Now this dough is a little dry because it's store-bought. So I would have, I probably should have, my own homemade dough is a little bit um, moister, so it sticks better. Um, a little 
bit of water with your finger along the bottom will help this stick together. But there you are. There's a nice sized rosette. And you can pull away some of the rolls to kind of give a little bit more. So here's my baking sheet, my parchment, and I'm gonna set it right on the baking sheet and I'm gonna continue on. If you're going to use this decorative top on more custard style pies, particularly like pumpkin, there's also an apple custard pie that I um, just made too, you're gonna wanna pre-bake the tops. And I'll explain this later. So I'm gonna be pre-baking this. So I've got my oven set at 350 while I'm doing all this decorative work. Now here's a strip that I'm going to even out the one end. I'm gonna show you how to do little buds now. So again, straight edge and then a little bit of a wave on the other end. This time I'm gonna use my water because I'm realizing that this dough's a little bit dry. So you're gonna do the same thing. You're going to roll But you're only going to go so far. So you go tight and then that last one you kind of, you know, gather at the bottom and open up. And this came together really nicely with the water on the on the bottom edge. I'm going to do a couple more of the rosettes. You can have some fun, you know, choosing your sizes. Like, let's make this kind of like a bigger rosette. That's almost about to bloom. So this is a longer strip. Go tight, go tight, go tight, go tight, go tight. Now I'm going to start to open it up a little bit, gather, pinch at the bottom, open up, pinch at the bottom, open up, pinch at the bottom, open up. And set that there. scraps. Don't get rid of them because I'm going to show you some fun things we can do with those. Okay, I'm going to show you a different flower now. Same strip. This time you don't have to necessarily have a straight edge to this guy, but you certainly don't need it that long. I'm going to say about half. So it's about <clears throat> seven inches. A little bit of water on the bottom. This I pinch, I pinch, almost like a fan, pinch, pinch, and I'm making a circle. Pinch, and you meet at the, the edge there. At the center, make sure everything's pinched together. So you have kind of like a pleated little circle. 
And then go around again where you crimped and accentuate. Now that's an ugly middle, right? That's where I grab a scrap. A little bit of water. You can flatten the bottom a little bit if you want. And pop, pop a center. If you want a little bit more of decoration, if you want a little bit more detail work on your center, take a toothpick and you can poke. So what you want is like a variety of sizes of flowers. So it might be fun to do a simpler one of this and a couple more smaller buds. Okay, so oftentimes everybody thinks you need to have these fancy stencils to do a lot of these decorative tops and it sure does add a little bit of um, professionalism to your top. And these are really easy to use. Um, I like to just kind of rub it in some flour, press down. Then you're gonna notice there's this little um, handle here and the handle adds a little indentation of some of the decorative, decorative elements of the stencil. Not all these stencils have them, some are just very simple, but this is from William Sonoma, they're really pretty. You don't wanna go all the way through, well you could. If you go all the way through, you're gonna cut right through the dough. If you want just an, an indentation, you just kind of press lightly. And sometimes what I like to do is pull it out, put it on my hand, and then just kind of feel it and push down. And then I use it again to pull out. And you just have a little bit of something. Now you can pull it all the way through if you want. <clears throat> and if you do that, it adds kind of a different element. something kind of cool. I usually don't do that. I push down, pull up, and then just kind of feel it. So I know I'm not going all the way through. I'm just getting a little bit of, of a decorative indentation. So you can certainly use these. And once you cut them, you know, add them to your kind of stockpile of decorations. And there's a few different ones that I have. This one's a really sweet little maple leaf. You know, nice little indentation. The indentation part takes um, a little bit of practice so that you get a sense of like, what kind of pressure you need on each of these. It took me a few tries to get used to it. But let's say you're on a budget or you have a small space and you don't have room for all these really fun, fancy gadgets, right? Well, I like to vary my leaves because flower leaves aren't necessarily tree leaves, right? And I have a lot of flowers. And flower leaves, especially roses, they're basically like a pointed oval. Do you see this? So using just a very sharp knife, just cut out kind of a pointed, almost look like an eyeball. And you can vary the sizes. Here's a little one. Big one. And then if you also want to add 
a little bit of like a decorative indentation, just use your knife and just very delicately, and you can, if you're too, if you're too nervous, you can use the back of your knife. Just kind of push in a little bit. The other thing I like to do once I indent it is give it a little bit of shape. I like to maybe crimp the edges so that you get a little bit of shape to them. Sometimes a little bit of moisture helps. In fact, let's do that. I'm just dabbing with some wet water and then I'm crimping. And I'm setting on my baking sheet. And then some you can just leave plain. And so the smaller ones, because they haven't fully developed yet, per se, in the, the land of botany, I kind of keep simple. And it adds just different different shape and texture to your top. Now all these scraps I usually roll up in a ball, crunch it all up, and then roll it back out and see what else I can make from it. A couple other things I like to do with a top like this. So this is where we're at. So I've got my crimped shaped detailed leaves. I have simpler leaves. I've got my fancy stencil work. I've got my rosettes, my different flowers. I also like having some viney stuff. So for viney stuff, there's two ways to go about this. You can cut a vine, something like that. And if you sense it needing to have a curve to it, then put it on the baking sheet in kind of the shape you're hoping to work with it. What I like to do, I'm gonna take my crimped dough, and add a little bit of moisture to this. And I actually prefer to do this create kind of a stem vine from just a really thin rolled out and then say you know I want something like that coming up one side. Maybe I want something a little longer, kind of weaving in through the flowers. This gives you a little bit more flexibility. And then I just bake them like that. So for my viney stem guys, I'm gonna put them on my baking sheet and the way I think I'm going to use them. So I like to have a little bit of curve to them. This one I'm going to kind of have more of a curve, kind of matching a pie curve, kind of coming up the, coming up the side a little bit. Finally, the simplest thing to do 
and finishing off something like this is just creating like little berries. It adds a little texture to your flower top. And I, they're about a quarter inch in diameter. And I like creating a good handful of these because I like putting them along the vines or popping them in between a couple leaves. Okay, one last thing before I put these in the oven. So sometimes it's nice to, you know, how you crimp a shape, but maybe you want it to even come up a little bit and then down. So you crumple up a little bit of parchment paper, find a little spot for this guy. And use the parchment paper as kind of a way to prop up your leaf if you want a shape like that. So you can use little balls of parchment paper to support some of your dough as it's baking. So it'll kind of come around this and, and have a shape like that. So I mentioned before, there's you know what, I might as well just cook this guy up even though he doesn't really match what I'm doing. <laughs> um, so, you can do this decorative work and then put it on top of like, you know, a typical fruit pie, which, you know, bakes at a high heat for about 45 to 50 minutes. And um, you do need to keep an eye on it because different, you know, different shapes and different weights of things are going to cook at a different pace. These rosettes take longer than, say, our viney leaf approach. So when I do something decorative like this on a fruit pie, I tend to tent it with tin foil with a steam hole for definitely half of the time. Um, because of just how hot things are and I want to make sure the filling is cooking at the same time and I want to kind of protect the top from browning and things getting too brown and other parts not cooking. So something to keep in mind. But um, I usually do decorative tops like this and this varied when I'm doing a custard pie. Um, because the custard pie cooks at a lower temp for a longer amount of time. So you definitely can't do a decorative top on custard pies. Um, they'll just they'll just turn into like burnt pieces of nothing on top of your pie. Um, so you cook your filling, your whole pie, and I pre-cook my top at 350. And I keep an eye on it. I start checking it at around 10 minutes and usually by 10 minutes, I'm pulling off these little guys and I'm pulling off, you know, the thinner, smaller pieces and I keep returning the pan back in and letting the rosettes cook. Usually the rosettes take about more to like 15 to 20 minutes. You want just a light golden touch to all of this. So keep checking, pulling things off as, you know, they finish and um, let them cool down. Once the custard pie or a pumpkin pie comes out, you let it kind of usually puffs up and then it settles back down. It, I usually wait for it to settle back down for about 10 minutes. Um, it's still pretty hot. And then at that point, I decorate. Um, I take my cooked pieces and I place them gently on top because the pie takes at least th three hours to really settle. So this will end up looking like it's been there all along. It's a great trick. So I've got my oven at 350 and I'm going to bake these up. Okay, it's been about eight minutes. I wanna show you. Now this, you know, this is store-bought dough because I just, I wanted to get this video to you guys, but you can see like our smaller guys, <laughs> I should be using a spatula, but our smaller guys are getting brown. Our flowers still are very raw in the middle. So, I have a plate and I'm just going to carefully pull off what is ready to be pulled off. 
I would safely say these guys also. In it goes again. Okay, so this has been about six more minutes at 350. And you can see some of these flowers have a nice golden edge to them. This guy's got a nice golden edge to them. Even this rosette over here has got a nice golden edge to it. These two big rosettes have nice a golden bottom and some golden edging. Um, I'm just gonna let them cool down on the baking sheet just to make sure those centers are cooking up. You know, things continue to cook while they're on the baking sheet. So I'm just gonna let the bigger rosettes kind of sit on them. The rest are cooling on this plate. You can also, if you've got a fine, um, fine mesh cooling rack where pieces are gonna fall through, that would ideally be better. Mine is not gonna work for something this delicate. So I just put them on a plate, put them by the window in our old drafty house and they'll cool down. So these are set to go. And um, basically you're gonna make and bake, say your pumpkin pie, and you're going to pull it out, let it sit for 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna show you how to decorate the top while it's still pretty hot but the top has settled. How I use all our wonderful little decorations. This is, I'm just going to admit it to everybody out there on YouTube before I get a ton of comments. Yes, this is a store-bought pie. Um, just a lot of personal things going on. I couldn't bake a pumpkin pie because it's a bit of a a production and if you are interested in the pumpkin pie that I enjoy making um, it is on the blog so go to urbandomesticdiva.com and search pumpkin pie in the search bar and you will find my pumpkin pie recipe which is really from the pie and pastry bible the the, the core recipe there um, so this Usually my pies are nine inches, so this is about an eight inch. Um, let's pretend we just baked it and it's puffed up, it's settled back down. Five to eight, 10 minutes, it settles, it's still pretty hot, let's pretend. So first things first, I like to work with my bigger pieces and create a focal point, sort of in a corner, or you could also work at the center and work out but I use my bigger, larger pieces and then work out from there. So here's my two big roses. And then let's say, you know, I've got my viney stuff. I start popping in. And you're doing this carefully because things are hot, right? And like I said, I like putting in these kind of along Now my buds, I kind of work away from the larger flowers. And then I like nestling in some of my flower leaves next to the flowers.
So there you go. You can see I started in a corner and built out from there. There we have it guys. Thank you for joining me today on Fridays with Flora and learning how to do decorative floral pie tops. Just in time for fall baking and Thanksgiving. So please subscribe to the channel. You never know what I'm gonna be up to. It could be baking tips, it could be canning tips, cooking, uh, rehabbing furniture, sewing, gardening, you name it, we do it here at the home garden and recipe site. So please subscribe to the channel. Have a wonderful Friday, have a great weekend. Enjoy the rest of those fall colors out there, guys. And uh, join me next Friday for our next adventure.